today we paint our jungle. Last time we got together, artists, we talked about drawing with a crayon or drawing with an oil pastel because I talked to you about setting up what I called a resist. Now, the first thing I want to do is to explain to you what a resist is. When you create a resist, that means that whatever you drew with is going to resist any water-based color you put on your picture. So if you use watercolor and you've drawn nice and dark, we'll experiment with this in a minute, then whenever you go over that crayon line, the crayon will still show. It will resist the watercolor. First though, let's look at one more painting by Henry Rousseau. Here we have a fight between a tiger and a buffalo. Today I want you to really look at the color and notice the way he set up his composition. Notice his tiger and his buffalo near the center of the composition but not in the middle of the page. Notice the way he has balanced his picture with oranges here and oranges here and even oranges at the bottom. Oh my goodness, he's made the magic triangle. Look at his picture. Leaf by leaf by leaf he has painted this masterpiece. Today we're going to look at the color and we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do with color to make your composition interesting. And the first thing I want to talk about is symmetry. Symmetry means whatever you see on this side of the painting, you're going to see on this side of the painting. And notice how he's created a certain amount of symmetry using those oranges. But he takes those oranges and he does something else as well. Something so important to the composition, my favorite thing, the magic triangle. Look at how he not only draws those oranges into a, a, a triangle, he paints those oranges into a triangle and that triangle encircles the main characters in this painting. Almost like there's two main characters here, isn't there? We have this giant banana tree behind. Do you see all the bananas? They look like giant yellow flowers hanging down. Um, they seem to be as important in this central part of the composition as the tiger and the buffalo. Look at his greens. Do you know that one professional actually took the time to count how many greens he had created in one of his jungle pictures? And do you know that he found more than 47 different kinds of green? Ah, remarkable. Look at the detail in the leaves. I wanna to talk to you another thing about color. In addition to symmetry and balance across the compositional plane, I want you to notice the difference between his lights and his darks and how some of his leaves will have light and dark in them. Some areas will be lighter, some areas will be darker. This creates what we call contrast. Contrast is very important in your composition. It makes it more interesting to look at. Isn't that beautiful? We are going to paint our jungle. But that doesn't mean we have to use paint per se. Now the first thing I'm going to demonstrate for you is some watercolor. And I want to talk to you some more about that resist. But we're also going to look at different media that you can use to complete your composition if you don't have any watercolors available. or you don't like using watercolor because sometimes watercolor gets away from you and bleeds all across the painting. We call it bleeding in art when the color moves across the surface and kind of does what it wants to instead of doing what you want to. I should mention there are artists who study for quite a long time to learn how to get their color to bleed. So if your color bleeds on you, don't panic. All right, 
Here's my set of watercolors, and you can see it's a mess. The only thing that really bothers me in this set is that somebody did not clean out their yellow when they finished painting. Yellow is such a delicate pigment. I'm gonna clean it right now. Yellow is such a delicate pigment that um, it can stain and be ruined. So it's always a good idea if when you are painting you get so excited that your colors start to get dirty, be sure to clean them at the end. All right. Job number one when you're working with colors, prime your watercolors. That means you are going to take one drop of water and place it inside each of the pans of watercolor. Watercolor requires water in order to work correctly. So you have to get your paints wet. You never want swimming pools. Swimming pools in your color just uh, creates many problems. So you never want your color to get too wet. And there's a secret to keeping your color from getting too wet. And I'm gonna show it to you now. Oops, can you see how much uh, color I got in my water? Just by cleaning it out. Do I have to change this water now? No. You would be amazed. In fact, I think I'll demonstrate. You can see how yellow, yellowy greeny this water is right now but I wanna paint some for you here on the border. Oh, can you see all that color in my painting? No, there isn't any. And that's because even though the color is in the water, there's not enough pigment there to, to um, change the surface of your painting, so don't worry about it. Now, I have primed all my watercolors. I have gotten them so that they are wet, but in order to keep them from getting so wet that I end up with a a uh, swimming pool in my paint set, here's what I do. Once I've cleaned the brush, and notice while I'm cleaning the brush, I am rubbing it on the water, I, the bottom of the water. I am not splashing around in my water. That doesn't clean your brush. Rub your brush on the bottom of the water container, and then when you go to pull it out, go one, two, three. If you pay attention, you'll even see the water falling back in. Oh, and by the way, when you're using watercolors, never squeeze your brush with your fingers. Never squeeze it. There's two problems with doing that. Number one, if you're fortunate enough to have an old brush like mine, this brush is actually hair. Squirrel hair, to be exact. And hair brushes hold watercolor beautifully rather than synthetic brushes that are made out of plastic. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a hairbrush, you don't wanna be pinching it with your fingers because there's oils on your hand and those oils are very important for your skin. If you don't have those oils there, you're gonna crack. <laughs> Nobody wants to be cracking. Um, but those oils get into the hair and they begin to disintegrate the brush. So what you wanna do is wipe one, two, three. Never pinch. Now the other reason you don't want to be pinching your brush is this. We are painting in watercolor. There has to be a certain amount of water in that brush. We just don't want so much water in our brush that we're going to make a swimming pool in our paint. Now, you will notice that in my set, I have one green. Does that mean I get to paint my whole picture green? One green well i may decide to paint my whole picture green but i'm not going to paint it one green i'm going to try and paint it 47 different kinds of green just like henry rousseau and the way we do it is by blending i want to give you a little example i think oh and by the way when we drew our picture we started at the front didn't we we started at the bottom of the page and we drew our leaves in the front when you go to paint your picture, you're going to start at the back and bring your color forward this way, okay? So maybe I should start by painting my sky. And I wipe my brush, one, two, three, and now I'm just putting it in my paint like this. I am just pulling up some paint into my brush and I'm going to come here. Ooh, this is going to be fun. 
I'm going to figure out where my sky is. We made so many shapes in our picture. It's kind of hard to tell what I'm doing. So I'm going to paint my sky blue. If I can figure out where my sky is. Going in and out of those leaves right there. And get that sky painted blue. Now, once I have my sky painted blue, there's not much of it to see. See how long I can paint with just this one little brush full of paint? Let's get over here. Uh oh. Oh dear. I just painted my tree. That was my tree trunk. There is my snake. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's my tree trunk. There's a leaf. Okay, I'm okay. Never mind. I'm not sure why that black line was there. What was I doing there? Uh, who knows? Making art is always an experiment, and you don't have to worry about making it perfect because we all know now that perfect is boring. Okay, so now I've got my sky back here. I'm gonna leave this white for the moment. I haven't decided whether that's the sun or the moon. I'm gonna do my painting and I'll, it'll tell me more what I wanna do. But now I'm gonna go and I'm going to paint a few of my leaves. Leaf by leaf by leaf. You do not get to paint them all with one swipe of green. Now, here I am loading up my brush with some green. Leaf by leaf by leaf, by leaf. All right, there's the one kind of green I have in my paint set. Now, if I were to paint my whole picture with this one kind of green, it wouldn't be very interesting. So, I'm gonna change that green, and the way I do it is this. First off, remember, always wash your brush before you put it back in the paint. Never just put from one color to the next. You want to try and keep your paints clean. I'm gonna to go to my yellow now. I've just washed off my brush and I've wiped it one, two, three. And I am picking up some yellow paint now. And I'm gonna take this yellow paint and I'm going to put it right on top of my green. Well, two of my greens. And look at that. Did you see how that changed the color of that green? The green now has a yellow tinge to it. I could even go further. Let's try this. This time, I'm just gonna load my brush. Look at how I'm rubbing it gently in the paint. I'm not smashing my brush. I'm gently rubbing my brush in the paint and I'm loading it with the yellow. We call this loading. Can you see yellow paint in that brush? If you can see the yellow, you've got enough to work. I'm gonna paint leaf by leaf, by leaf, by leaf. I think that's a leaf there too. Now I have four yellow leaves, but I really want green leaves. Oh, let's think for a minute. Remember that color wheel? There are three basic colors, red, yellow, and blue. And if you take blue and add it to yellow, you should get green. But let's find out if it's true. Here I go again. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this blue. I don't need a lot of blue. Yellow is a very delicate pigment. I don't need a lot of blue. I'm gonna come back here and put some of that blue right on top of my, holy mackerel, would you look at that? I've just made another kind of green. Do you realize that you can go through your entire painting and mix? your green with every one of the colors that's in your paint set and see if you can't make a new kind of green doing that. You can go through your paint set and add yellow and blue to every color in this paint set and see if you can make different kinds of paint green. Um, remember you want darks and lights. So you don't want your whole jungle to be light. You don't want your whole jungle to be dark. Leaf by leaf by leaf, shape by shape. 
I'm going to paint a couple of oranges in here. Again, I rinse off my brush. I go to my orange. Careful, don't smash. Make sure you've loaded your brush with color. And then I'm going to come back here and paint some oranges. You have to go slowly when you're painting. Notice I'm still working at the back of my picture. I don't want to come forward too fast. If I do, I might run into a problem. Better to paint starting at the back and come forward slowly. Okay, there's some oranges in there. Ooh, isn't that looking pretty? I'm already liking my picture. That's watercolor. But what if you don't have any watercolors at home? What if your mother says, Oh, I don't want you making a mess. Go get your markers. Markers are just watercolors in tubes. And you can blend them just the way we blend our watercolor paint. So, let's try it. I'm going to start, well, we could start with the green. Let's do some green leaves. I can come over here. Here's a big, beautiful green leaf. I can paint that leaf green. Go slowly. Fill the entire shape. I can paint... Oh boy, where's another leaf? Ha! There's a leaf. I can paint this leaf green. Oh wait, I want to talk to you about leaves for a second. Are leaves going to be all exactly the same kind of green? Go slowly. You want to do your best work. It's not a race. I am leaving some lines in there. Do you see how I've left some lines in my color? Hmm, I'll show you why. All right, now I did that green. Now I'm gonna take some yellow and we're gonna see if we can change this green like we did with, oh yes, look at that. When you add your yellow to your green, notice that your green changes. You can change the color by putting one color on top of the other. Now I'm drawing with my color right over my black crayon line. But you see, my black crayon line is still there. Resist. Oh yeah, but your mom said, I don't want you getting those markers all over the place. What about colored pencils? Do you have some colored pencils? The thing about colored pencils is you have to be careful. They're soft. When you use colored pencils, use them carefully because you don't want to keep sharpening, sharpening them, sharpening them. They wear down very fast. Okay, let's find another leaf. Do we see any more leaves over here? I think I see a leaf. No, that's part of that tree trunk that's hanging off to the side. Uh, it's hard to tell what's going on here. Oh well, I'm gonna come over here because I can see a leaf over here. I see another leaf right here. I see a leaf right here. And another leaf right here. And I've colored four leaves with my green colored pencil. Now I'm gonna yellow, add some yellow to that one to some of these and see if, oh yes, even when you are working with colored pencils, as soon as you add a different color to the green, those colors will blend. There are some beautiful works done by botanical artists here in Sonoma County. Now a botanical artist is an artist who, who draws leaves and flowers and, and uh, beautiful pictures of nature, the flora, the plants of nature. And they use primarily colored pencils and their work is delicate and gorgeous. Now, can I only add two colors together? Could I actually try adding some blue to my green and my yellow? Let's find out what happens. Whoa, I 
I've just gotten a new kind of green. It might be hard for you to see since I'm doing all these little tiny leaves at the back of the picture. But as you work, you will find that you can just keep blending colors and blending colors. Oh, wait a minute. You don't have any colored pencils. That's okay because do you still have those crayons? Oh man, we never use our crayons often enough. I love crayons. Here's a leaf. Where's another leaf? Here's a leaf. Here's a leaf. Here's a leaf. But again, do I have to just paint them all one kind of green? No. I could come back with my blue and paint my blue right on top of some of those greens and see what happens. Oh, for goodness sakes, they blend just like the watercolor did. Hey, you want to try something else? When you do this, of course, you have to be careful because the pencil has to go first. What if I take my green colored pencil and I paint a leaf with my green colored pencil, but I want to change it by adding some crayon to it. As long as you do the colored pencil first, because remember the crayon will resist the pencil too. So I've drawn with that green. Now I can come back, oh, let's try, ooh, let's try some orange with that green and see what happens to our green now. And I can come back with my crayon and I can change my green, it almost looks like army green, by putting crayon on top of that colored pencil. You can also try, this is a little more complicated, but it might be fun. You can also try taking your crayons. See, this is an experiment. There's no right way to do this. There's no wrong way to do with it. You're supposed to have fun with it. So any way you want. Okay, I'm gonna take my crayon. I think I'll try this dark green crayon and I'm gonna paint another leaf. Let me find another, how about this grass right here? I'm gonna paint this grass with my green crayon. Now remember, crayon is wax. It's gonna set up a resist. So I'm not gonna paint it really hard because I wanna try putting my watercolor marker on top of it. And let's see if I can change the color by doing that. Oh, for goodness sake, that even changes it. And you're gonna notice as you go that every time you make a new green, it's gonna be different than the green you made before. The idea is to see if somehow you can create more than 47 different kinds of green in your painting. Have fun with it. Um, something else I wanna show you because it's kind of fun. I'm going to paint my zebra's face white and I'm going to use my white crayon to do that because I want to show you what can happen with the resist. Now we'll see if I can do this well. All right, so I'm going to paint my zebra's face white. Now you have to paint hard in order to get the resist. Paint his ears here and I'm just painting his face. But when I finish painting his face white, I am going to come back with some green watercolor and I'm going to paint the leaf that is going behind here. And I want you to see what, how the, um, the paint is resisted. Uh, am I saying that correctly? How the crayon resists the white watercolor. Okay, so I've got that white face painted in. I'm grabbing my watercolor set again. and. Oh, I want to make a light green. How do you make a light green? I only have one green in here. How am I going to make it light? Yeah, you guys are smart. More water, less paint. If I want it dark, more paint, less water. If I want it light, more water, less paint. So I'm just going to take and do one swipe. I hope that's going to be lighter. Look like it picked up a lot. And I'm going to come down this leaf right here. I'm gonna go over that black line. I'm even gonna go across the face of my, uh, it's not resisting that well, is it? That didn't even resist at all. Hmm. If you 
don't want your zebra to have a white face because your resist didn't work. And remember, it's always an experiment. You can always just come back with some water and wipe it off because that's one thing you can do once you have uh, put down the crayon. You can just wipe it off with the uh, wet and clean brush. Okay, so balance. Now, I've painted some orange oranges on that side of my picture. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paint some more oranges over here. I want a balance in my color. But remember, when I drew this, I drew this so that I would have a magic triangle. Where was my magic triangle? Did I make a magic triangle in this picture? I have orange, orange. If I wanted to make a magic triangle with my color, I would need to bring that orange down here a little bit. So, is there anything that says I can't have an orange piece of grass? Of course not. So I'm going to paint this grass orange right here. Yes, I know we're supposed to be painting from the back to the front, but I just want you to see this. I've also made another decision. As I paint my picture, do you remember I put those two gigantic flowers in there? There's a gigantic flower back here. You can barely see it anymore. There's a gigantic flower over here. And my zebra is going to be mostly white if my resist works. And if I paint my zebra white and my flowers white, then do you see I'm going to have a magic triangle there? So now I'm setting up two magic triangles. I've got my oranges making a magic triangle and I will have my white flowers. Uh, but now I definitely have a problem. What happens to you if you want to paint with your watercolors a white flower? My set does not have any white paint. Of course not, because these are transparent watercolors. That means that when you put the color on, you don't want to put it too thick because you want the paper to show through a little bit. Transparent means that you can see through it. So I've got my transparent watercolors and no white paint. So what am I going to do to make white? Hmm, guess what? You don't paint it. You just leave it white. Now I could crayon it all white if I wanted to, or I can just leave the white of the paper. If you ever walk into an art gallery and you look at this white picture and it's entitled Birch Trees in a Snowstorm and it doesn't look like there's anything on the paper at all because the snow is falling so hard you can't even see the trees, that's because they didn't paint anything. When you are painting with watercolors, you leave the paper white if you want to have something white. So if I decided for that to be my moon, I would just leave that paper white. That might be interesting. That's not a triangle, but that would be interesting if I had white, 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 white. Now, let's say you're going along in your painting and suddenly you realize that um, you have holes left over in your picture. I'm starting to see that between my leaves, I have holes here. Well, that's where you as an artist get to decide what it is you want to do. I could say, well, that's going to be more of my sky. And I could take any medium I want and I could add blue coming in behind and in the little tiny places between the branches. Now it's kind of nice to use a colored pencil back in there because I don't have very much space and the watercolor is kind of hard to get into skinny little places so a pencil might be a good idea or a crayon or even your marker. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to fill in at the top of my picture in between all my leaves where I still 
want to see sky. Go slowly, go slowly. Sometimes your markers don't want to cover up the whole area. But take your time so that you do. It's art is never a race. Art is never a race. In fact, whatever you do and you want to do well, it's not a race. Don't worry about it. Sometimes people work fast, naturally. Sometimes people work slowly, naturally. It's not a race, so it doesn't matter who finishes first. In fact, I like to say that the artist who finishes last is usually the winner. They've usually put more of um, uh, more beautiful shapes into their picture. Let's try some blue crayon here in my sky. Does the blue have to be say the same color all the way across your page? Of course not. This is art. We're talking about Henry. We want to see how many different kinds of color we can get into this picture. Okay, now I have made some green and uh, some blue sky up here, but now I, I figure I feel like I've gotten down into the jungle part of the picture, but I don't have any leaves there, there, or there. And I want it to look like part of the jungle. So even though I haven't drawn any leaves, I am still going to use green back here. I am not going to make all this part blue like the sky. I'm just going to move into green. And you know what? I want my green dark because that's in the background. So, oh, I don't have a black crayon here. That's all right. I'll use the blue. And I'll make this a very, you know, I'm trying to make it dark. It's not making it too dark, is it? It's a pretty color. It's more of a blue-green like a turquoise, but it's not as dark as I want to be. Hmm. I wonder what would happen. No, that's not going to... Ooh, let's try putting a brown marker. Now, this is crayon, so it might not work. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's resisting. Now I'm getting resist, but that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Could that be plants back there? Ooh, I kind of like that. Be careful not to touch it, though, because this watercolor marker is wet, and it can smear. Start at the back. Slowly move forward. Finish your jungle. This is the end of our story of Rousseau and his jungles. I will tell you this much. Henry worked hard his entire life. He believed in himself. He was not afraid to, to stand proud next to his paintings. And when people laughed at them, even in front of him, he did not mind. He was proud that he had taken the time to paint these beautiful pictures. He was proud of what he had accomplished. All his life, Henry was poor. He, at the end of his life, in the early 1900s, he began selling some of his paintings because slowly, slowly, certain artists and certain other people were beginning to appreciate his naivety, his childlike innocence in his pictures. Pablo Picasso bought one of his paintings and kept it his entire life. He would not be parted from his Henry Rousseau painting. He so admired and respected Henry for doing what he believed in. Even at the end of his life, when Henry's paintings were on display, mostly they laughed. Henry painted anyway. And as often happens with artists, after Henry died, people started going, well, wait a minute, maybe he had a good idea here. And several people began to collect his works. And it's funny how that happens. I think I've said it to you before. When you, your friend gets a new toy, don't you want to get a toy just like that? Don't you want one too? And that's exactly what happened to Henry's paintings after he died. His paintings were collected more and more. And finally, one collector put a 
whole bunch of his paintings together and created the Henry Rousseau Museum for naive painters. And in this museum, even today, they share the paintings of other artists who, like Henry, painted like a child. You know, it's an interesting thing. When Pablo Picasso, who became the most famous artist of the 20th century, and even today there's no one that comes close to being as incredible as Pablo has been in his life. When Pablo was an old man, he went in to visit a first grade classroom and he was watching these first graders make art. He walked around for a few minutes and of course he was, he was being followed by reporters because by that time Pablo Picasso was so famous that reporters followed him anywhere. He turned to the reporters and he looked at them and he said, you know, it's taken me my entire life to paint like a child, naive, innocent, pure. Today, every one of Henry Rousseau's jungles, especially his jungles, are revered. Never give up. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm gonna finish my painting I'll post it when it's done so that you can see how my jungle turned out. I would love to see yours. If you can't bring it in and show it to me at school, send me a photo. I would love to see how your Henry Rousseau jungle looks once it's completed. I've enjoyed this series. I hope you have. Visit me again. We're going to do more.